Welcome to Life in a Bottle, season one, episode 17. 17. Episode 17. I am Mitch. Really, dude? I am not Mitch. I am Kyle. It's Kyle. <laughs> and I am joined by Elliot and Cody. And we have another exciting wine to discuss this week, a super exciting wine. And uh, we'll be discussing the color collector. So we are in the United States. We're in the Willamette Valley in Oregon. And more, and specifically. more specifically in the Aeola Amity Hills in the Bjornsson Vineyard. This is the 2017 Color Collector Gamay. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this wine from what little I've heard. So talk to me because right. female producers are it's, my favorite. It's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Um, this is a one woman operation. <gasps> Bethany Kimmel is the woman. She does all of the work herself in the winemaking, the bottom of the wines. She even designed these labels, these beautiful labels. How about them, by the way? Eye catching. Oh Absolutely stunning. I want to collect them all. There is, <laughs> just to be clear, there is just one wine, but there are three different labels. Um, and you can have them all. Um, this, this is a very special offer. There's very little wine to go around, so there will be a limit of three bottles per customer. How many cases did she produce about? She made 70 cases of wine. Whoa, tiny. And we got um, six, 60 bottles, <gasps> which is oh, now- wow, holy cats. Which is now 59 bottles. <laughs> and uh, Thank and you. that's it. We hope, to get, we hope to get more next year. Um, so she's small scale production though, right? As, as small as it gets. This is, the, this is surely the smallest producer to cross the threshold in Anconas this year. And wow. super, super handcrafted, handmade wines. Yep. yep. And sustainable Everything's farming on the hand. vineyard. And... Sustainable farmed and uh, fermented with indigenous yeast. It's uh, cool. pretty much the real deal all around. And I'm, I'm super excited to share these with our people. Awesome. Um, how, was the, how was the wine made? You were saying something earlier about... So, uh, the, the crazy detail is that it's hand, 70% of the grapes are hand stemmed, in wow. which case she quite literally plucks off berry by berry, along with some of her lady friends, well into the night, and they, they pluck off 70% of the, the grapes from each cluster, um, and it's, uh, it basically serves for this, this super soft maceration. Mm. You get a very delicate extraction of tannins, a very delicate extraction of flavor, and uh, hence what you guys are Talk about a labor, labor of love. Labor so, of love. Uh, real people, real What do you guys wine. think of the color? The color is very stunning. pretty. Stunning, yeah. It's, it's very clear for a more naturally produced wine. Mm -hmm. It's got a little, little bit of opacity, but not much. Yep. It is, it is unfined and filtered, but it just has a very soft haze to it. Mm -hmm. And the color is this gorgeous, I was saying, it's like what color I would think fairy tales would be. <laughs> it's got this deep ruby, and what was it? <laughs> if fairy tales were a wine. Um, Gimme colored glasses, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> yes. The depth of that cherry cranberry color it is just yep. stunning. Is stunning. And speaking of cranberry. Yeah, that uh, nose. This nose. Oh. I, I get gaminess on it, but there's fruit like no business. There's and... some, some savory earthiness, mm -hmm. definitely, for sure. Some turned earth, some wet leaves. Mm. For sure. But it's not a funky no. wine. No. no, it's not. It's, it's pleasantly like tart cranberries is what I smell. Mm -hmm. Tart cherries. Mm. Layer, layers, layers of different kinds of cherries. Mm -hmm. For sure. Very stony minerality. This wet one, mm -hmm. it, is, it is fermented with indigenous yeast, so, mm -hmm. you know, it's... She ferments in an open top barrique. She's popped the tops off of the barrels and they just ferment like that. <laughs> and uh, they just do their thing. It's, uh, it's all in the winery. She doesn't add any yeast. She doesn't add anything. And the complexity, That's pretty again, cool. like there's layers it's stunning. of floral notes yep. on this nose. I got it. Was it rose sip. petals that you had said? Yeah, rose petals. Mmm. 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 My kingdom for a bottle of this Gamay. She's not wrong. No, it's that good. And that that texture, that's largely from the hand stemming. Okay. That's, that's why she puts in that little extra labor of love. Not little extra, it's super It's really huge. Sig <laughs> super significant labor of love. But it's refreshing and delicious, but it does have a structure that I feel would be so food friendly. Absolutely. The freshness and mm -hmm. acidity that comes through at the same time as that earthy savoriness that you were talking about, that kind of acidity, acidity that kind of jumps out and grabs you. Mm. 
Excellent, and excellent food wine. Would you guys agree this tastes as much like quintessential Willamette Valley as it does quintessential Gamay, which is obviously exactly what it is. Pretty yes. much, yeah. It's textbook. It's On exactly what this one should be. It is indeed. So, food um, guys? Hey, food. Oh, barbecue all day for me. Anything. I mean, yeah, anything, <laughs> loneliness, friends, whatever. No, I think it could stand up really well to some smoky, intensely flavored foods, although it has its own character. So that's my go for sure. With this. I uh, I immediately go to Thanksgiving mm. for oh, yeah. this. Absolutely. Turkey and stuffing. If anyone can hold on to it that long. <laughs> It's a tough bet. And, and salmon too. This is a Ooh, red wine yes. that should, should not be overlooked. With, sure. You know, your heart or your fish. Definitely. 100%. Mm. Cool. Well, awesome. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Yeah, Cheers. Cheers to the Collar Collector.